Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and today I'm going to show you how to work with Sucragel. Now, you've probably watched one of my other videos using Sucragel, and one of the reasons I've got so many different types of videos using the Sucragel materials is it is such a versatile material. It's also very different to your standard emulsifiers or gelling agents. It's, it's really neither of these things. In fact, the type of emulsion or gel that Sucragel forms is really what we call a high internal phase emulsion. What you can see here is the external phase consists of the water, the glycerin, and the surfactant. And that big internal phase is actually the oil being trapped by this small external phase. So it's such a different material to work with, which makes it so great to create really innovative product forms from massage gels, oily gels, masks, scrubs, gel to milks, cleansing products, moisturizing products, all sorts of products. And they're such different forms. The extra bonus is when using Sucragel, you can actually boost the hydration factor of the skin and retaining moisture within the skin. So there's added benefits from using this material as well. Also using this material, you can create so many different products in one range. So you don't need to source a lot of different emulsifiers, thickeners, surfactants. When you're clever with formulating with Sucragel, you can use the one material across multiple products in your product range. But what often holds people back is they watch me in a video and don't forget my videos are time lapsed and then they put the sample together far too quickly and it doesn't work out for them. So in this video, I want to show you what can happen when you don't process Sucragel right and then how to fix it. That's the other great thing about this material. If you don't get it right, you can save your batch, both at a lab level and a bulk production level. So first of all, I'm gonna show you the wrong way to put the sample together. Then I'm gonna show you how to save your sample by using the right method. Remember, method is crucial and my videos are time-lapsed. So just remember to add the oil to the sucra gel slowly and in small increments. It's the first additions that matter the most. So make them the smallest and let the product stabilize before you add more of your oil. And I can guarantee you that once you've figured out how to process this material, you'll get it right every time. It's just gonna take a couple of practices because it's such a different material to work with and such a different method to anything else you've done before. So let me show you how it's done. So first of all, on the screen, I've got the very basic formula I'm gonna be working with, but there's so much innovation to be had. It's more the method that is important, and that is what I'm showing you today. So we start with our sucra gel material in one beaker, and we have our oil phase in another beaker. Now what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna put it together incorrectly, so that you can hopefully see what you might have been doing wrong. Then I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Now when you first add your oil phase, what you would have seen in the instructions is that you add it slowly and in small increments. Now this means slowly and very small increments at the start. So typically people will start with additions somewhat like that and then keep adding and adding. And already I'm doing it wrong, but I'm just gonna keep going because I want to finish showing you this. Now, some of the things you can see straight away when you're working with the material, I do have to keep adding too fast to make this fail, is first of all, I'm not waiting for this bulk product to become glossy and smooth looking. I just keep adding. So this is not looking right. It's looking far too liquid. It's not looking glossy at all. and people just keep adding. Now, another thing is they tend to keep their stirrer pretty much in the same position they started, and they tend to keep it at the same speed. These are all things that are not going to help your sucra gel product come together. 
it's about this point that they start to think, right, I'm going to give up. Let me show you what it is starting to look like already. First of all, it's far too liquid. It shouldn't be looking like this at this point. You can probably also see there's a bit of oily separation already. And it's not looking glossy. It's looking quite matte by comparison to what it should be looking. So some of the things I did wrong here was it looked like I was adding small increments, but that was actually far too fast and far too much at each addition. I didn't increase the rate of stirring. I didn't adjust my propeller height. So I wasn't getting adequate or sufficient stirring through the whole of the product as I continued to add more oil. I didn't give it time to write itself or form that external phase honeycomb structure that it needs. So this sample here is failed, but I don't need to throw it out. I could fix this batch and I'm gonna show you how. Now here is the same product that I prepared yesterday. So basically, if I finished adding this all together and gave up on it, I could set that aside and come back to it tomorrow. By the next day, you'll see it will separate out into its layers like this. To save this, I simply need to pour off that oil phase. And then I can set my sucre gel back up for stirring. Now I'm gonna give this a stir first. One of the first things I wanna do here is I wanna make sure this becomes very glossy before I start adding any of this oil phase. Now it's starting to look glossy and already hopefully you can see it's a very different colour to the way this one turned out. So far, I'm on the right track. And this is how it should have looked from the start when I was preparing this first sample here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of oil now and let it have time. I'm also going to increase the stirring speed of my propeller and make sure that I get a nice glossy gel formation in this beaker before I add any more oil. Just so you can see by comparison, look how much more viscous it is already. And I've hardly added any oil. It's also looking really glossy compared to this product here, which was very matte looking. And the colour is also very, very different. So now I'm going to add a little bit more oil. And again, only a little bit. And I'm going to let it stir properly. Key things I'm looking for is that it remains light in colour and that it looks very glossy on the top. Now it's really important you don't continue to add more oil until you see these key factors. You're really looking to see a lot of gloss in this product before you add more oil. And again, I only add a small amount of oil. Now it's a little hard for you to see totally, but have a look at the viscosity it's starting to build. It's already coming together much better than this first sample. And remember, this is the one I'm saving, so it could look even better if I got it right from the start. So I'm going to turn the propeller speed up a bit here. And remember, I'm really looking to see that gloss before I add more oil. Now, in case you're wondering, how does this work with scale up? When you're doing scale up larger batches, it's even easier to get right because remember, a small amount in a large batch is a much larger amount than what you're working with in the lab. So you start by adding about 10% of your oil phase to the sucre gel in a bulk production batch. And you need to let that stir for about a good half an hour just so that it can start to form that external structure. Then you can start adding more oil slightly faster, and the more you add, you turn up that mixing speed, 
and you can shorten the amount of time between additions and increase the amount of oil you add each time. It's really forming that starting structure that matters the most to getting your sucra gel product right. Another thing you'll need to do, especially in a lab, not so much in a large batch, but in the lab, as you start to get more product in your beaker, you need to adjust the height of that propeller stirrer so that you can make sure you are mixing the entire product effectively. Otherwise you just don't form that honeycomb structure to support the very high internal phase. Now, as you can see, I'm starting to add more and more of the oil phase at each addition because that honeycomb structure has formed and is spreading with each oily addition. So it becomes easier to work with once you've got your initial mixture started properly. Now by this stage you can see I've still got a lot of my oily phase to add but you can now see just how viscous this product is becoming. Look at that and look how glossy it is as well. This is going to turn out perfectly and all it needed was a little bit slower additions at the start. Hopefully you can see the dramatic difference between making it right and making it wrong so far. From here, I'll be able to start adding a lot more oily phase at each time. I will need to adjust the propeller height to make sure that I'm able to mix through the whole volume of product effectively. And it will start to come together much faster and perfectly for me. Again, you can see that addition of oil, it's not stirred through thoroughly. We just need to make sure it is stirred through properly to make sure we get that homogenous mixture and that network form. I'm just going to adjust the propeller height again so that we can make sure we get mixing through the entire volume. While this is coming together so nicely, I want to again show you where it's still not mixed enough. Even though I'm at this final stage, again, I want to show you what's not right so you can troubleshoot. See, that's looking a little curdled. It's certainly not looking shiny and glossy. And then you can see when it is put together properly, we build that beautiful viscosity and a beautiful glossy product. And there it is there, your beautifully formed oily gel. 
Well, the actual percentage input of sucrogel that you'll use compared to water or oil in all the different types of products that you can create will vary. The method is more or less the same. It follows a similar principle of small additions of the oil phase to the sucrogel at the start. Make sure it's mixed thoroughly to form that network and then you can add more of your oily phase in larger increments later. We could still save this one, the failed one. Just leave it overnight and the next day fix it just the way I showed you I did today. And they're exactly the same formula. I just prepared one yesterday and let it fail and then fixed it today. Once you've worked with Sucrogel a few times and you get this technique right, it will work for you every time. And as I mentioned in a larger production batch, it's even easier to get it right because a small addition of 10% mixed thoroughly for a good half an hour builds that base network and then you can add the remaining oil phase in slightly larger increments over time. So in large batch production, it's even easier to get it right than it is in the lab. Now, for those of you who don't have a propeller stirrer, this is a product that does suit a stick blender. Just remember to alter the height of the stick blender into the product as you saw me do with the propeller and that high shear of the stick blender is perfect when working with your sucre gel materials. Now, I know a lot of you can get sucre gel from your small materials. If you are purchasing your sucre gel in bulk and if you're using it in multiple products across your range, you would be. You can also work with the supplier directly. They've got loads of innovative ideas and troubleshooting tips if you're having issues mixing your sucre gel. But just remember the wrong way to do it and the right way to do it, as well as how to save your lab batch. And you just do the same to save a full production batch if you need to. But remember, the bulk batch means bigger incremental additions, so it's even easier to work with when you get to the manufacture stage. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's helped solve your sucre gel production issues. And now you can get back to enjoying a lot of my other videos where I use sucre gel in all sorts of innovative product types. It really is a fantastic material that enables you to create different types of products to the standard emulsions or foaming products out there. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.